I'm Mark Adolf. Um, I'm the son of Peter Adolf, who was the uh, founder and inventor of uh, Subutio back in 1947. As well as being that of his son, I'm also a fan of Subutio, always have been, and play as much as I possibly can. And uh, I'm very proud of my father. Perfect. Yeah, I love Cringe worthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. My dad found that there was a, a niche for a, for a hobby after the war and there was actually a game out at the time called New Footy and he thought he could do better with that so uh, just on a whim he put an advert in a national magazine called Boys Own Magazine advertising this game which he hadn't even got anything made for it at all. He went over to America and he got a message, a telegram from his mother saying um, I've had a few replies for this advert um, and people have sent me, uh, I think it was about £4,000 worth of postal orders wanting this game. It was all hands on deck really after that with the help of his mum to get basic games produced for the people who, who sent in their, their orders. To start with, the production really was just done with my dad and, and his mum. Plus, he had to get, get the figures printed as, as quickly as possible. Um, they were the cardboard cutout figures. There wasn't even any um, pitch involved to start with in post-war. And he just put a note in and he just put some chalk in the original boxes, just saying, use an old army blanket and mark out your own, your own pitch. So instead of a pitch, he just had a bit of chalk to do, do, it, do it yourself. He found an old button off my grandmother's coat, just an ordinary one lying around. And that was a eureka moment. He thought, no, if I, if I put a, some sort of weight, which turned out to be a washer in the end, in, in the middle of that, um, put a player on top, and that would balance it out a lot more. Dad had a way of getting people on board to help. It was a, it was a lot of hard work, but he was getting, getting orders in all the time, and it was post-war, and people just wanted a refreshing pastime to do. So Butio blew new footy out of the water, especially with the, the Yo-Yo scale plastic figures eventually that came out with the washers and everything. Dad was a very keen ornithologist, bird watcher, and uh, when he went to um, register or trademark uh, a name for the game, he wanted to call it um, simply um, the hobby because that's what he thought it was going to be. And when he, uh, the application got, got uh, rejected um, as being too generic, but he had this thing, he always wanted to um, you know, make it, give it a standout name, so he thought, I'll give it the Latin name for the hobby, which is a small falcon bird, which is uh, Falco subutio subutio. When I was young, um, it was always around, really, and it, it didn't really mean much to me, but I remember when I was, when I was very little, I had, a, I had a phrase I used to use, I used to call it knock another one over, because in my mind, that's exactly what I used to do. It used to, I used to flick it, and these, these players used to go everywhere. At school, I got to do sort of Subutio leagues and everything, and I've, I got involved in that. And but I got banned because I kept winning it. Dad supplied all the uh, the equipment for my school league and everything, um, so I thought this was good. I'm I'm, I'm winning all this, but uh, I think they got, uh, you know, it suddenly dawned on them why I was doing it. And then I just used to play like anybody else, anybody else at the time, except I used to play my dad which got very, very uh, heated and very, very competitive and uh, he always used to beat me. This is the table here which my father had made for me, um, especially back in the day. Um, we used to have it set up permanently at, uh, at our home in Langton Green. It's all very faded, but it's, it's, it's got a bit of history behind it. He was always thinking of the next big thing even during the Subutio days, he was always thinking, how can I improve this? How can I improve that? Any game could, could, with a lot of thought, be, as he called it, Subutioized. The next one to come really after the football was Subutio cricket. Then there was the, the Subutio rugby. It's always in his, in his mind that once, you know, once you've got somebody hooked on the Subutio brand, they, they'd go and buy this, they go and buy the cricket, however rubbish it was. And some of it was rubbish, even some of the accessories were total rubbish. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, he couldn't, he, he tried to replicate that in the future, but he couldn't get anywhere near it, so yeah. My dad was always cut out to do his own thing, really, because he had, he had, he had um, employed jobs and he never really got on with it. And it was always, you know, he's always getting fired from, from various jobs for the, for, 
you know, one thing or another. Um, and then when the Sabutio thing came along, I think he found his calling, really. He was quite a creative man. He was a very charming man when need be. He was totally uncorporate and um, best decisions he ever made were outside his own office. When he first met my mother, he used to tell, tell her that he was, a, he was a navigator in a bomber over Berlin, which was a complete lie. The fact was he was in the RAF and uh, well, I, think he was just, I think he was just ground crew driving this, that and the other around at the uh, base. And the sad thing was my mum actually believed it. You know, the uh, navigator in a bomber over Berlin. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what Dad would think about it now. And I think he'd be totally gobsmacked because although it was successful during his time and then he sold out in 69, 70, he realised how good it was, but I don't think, he thought it would just sort of fade out. But from my point of view, um, as the years have gone on, it just made me realise how big it is. And since Dad died, I've always, um, I've always felt it a nice responsibility to keep it going. and keep it in people's consciousness and help out if I can. I, f I find it quite incredible. But my, always my first thing would be, oh, well, I'd love to be able to tell Dad, well, um, you know, this is happening and that's happening. What do you think about this? And, uh, you know, um, I'm, I, I've, I've been doing more stuff than you ever did about it. And what do you think of that and all that? It means more to me now than it ever did when I was little.